I, I, I'm here, here today to talk to you guys a, a, a about a problem. Um, and I don't think we, we, we've, we've solved it yet, although I'm certain we can. The problem is about file system images that we get off the internet from, or from USB sticks or, or whatever that we don't fully trust. And that someone may have been a little bit malicious um, with. Um, and so, you know, the, 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 the big pro, you know, well, what make, makes these images a problem is if we go and we mount them in the kernel, and then um, th they might cause problems. And when you talk to a file system developer about dealing with the kind of problems someone malicious can create in a file system format, they back slowly away from you because this is a scary, scary, difficult problem, and they don't want to solve it, and they don't want to be responsible for it. Um, so, what we've been doing um, in Linux with automating file systems and all this stuff is really not, in the long term, a, a really sustainable option. Um, file systems are a little too complicated for that, um, at least using the kernel drivers. Um, and we don't know how to build a file system you know, with, all the other, with all of our current priorities that um, is robust against that, <coughs> doing that. Um, what we can do is move the file for for you know, ISOs we download, for VM images, for container images, for USB sticks, what we can do is we can run the file system drivers in user space and connect them up into the kernel with views. Um, that's at least a small enough attack surface. There's a reasonable chance there, there won't be a um, kernel bug in it. Um, at least not, not most days. Um, and so, you know, I, I, you know I, I've been looking for um, what, what ways to actually m make this happen and various pieces. The best um, project I've seen out there is libguestfs that the VM guys are doing. I don't know quite how complete it is, but it does have a bunch of the common file systems. Um, you know, there, there's some other, and it is kind of important to reuse um, at least as a fallback, file system drivers that are in the kernel instead of rewriting file system drivers because there are about 100 file system drivers in the kernel. There are 100 different file system types. And while some of them are virtual, some of them are other, you know, that's a big enough number. I don't think we're, we're going to replicate them all in user space anytime soon. Um, so being able to leverage that I think is important. But so, um, you know, there, there are a few other projects out there like LK Linux that'll run, turn, turn Linux into a library and stuff, but that, that hasn't merged upstream. How, how well it works, I don't, you know, I don't really know, but we, we've got the pieces. We've got Fuse, we've got ability to run file systems in user space, but we don't have any of the user space plumbing. That's the problem. And, um, and yeah, and so you know, I'm here to um, solicit input and see if there's anyone on the user space side who's got some ideas on, on how to um, finish connecting the dots and make this work. So when I talk to people, it's like, oh yeah, we just do, do this and it's not a problem because file system drivers in user space, it's sandboxed, you don't got, ha have to worry about um, the, 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 those guys from that security agency, I can't tell you who they are. Or, or, or that malicious hacker on TV who just dropped a USB stick on your um, uh, uh, pavement outside, and you're really looking to see if it was one of your coworkers, um, and you want to give, give, give them back their USB stick. Um, and yeah, so at, at that, I'm going to open this up for discussion and questions, and um, say, um, does anybody have ideas? Does, he, um, does anybody have any questions for me? Yes. So are you aiming at actually... Do you want a, a runtime or a compile, a compile time compatibility? Because are you actually looking for loading the .ko, uh, xfs.ko from the kernel as compiled from the kernel? or? Or is it good enough to take the XFS source code and compile it against some 
header and that will make it feel like in the kernel. Okay. So what, what is your goal? So my goal fundamentally is that wherever we get these file systems from, that, w th that we have the tools that we can use them and so we don't need to worry about it. Um, you know, I don't think it's re reasonable to take a kernel object and run it in some, some place in user space, you know, but I do think it's reasonable to like take UML or something like that and run it in user space that way. And I don't know if that's what we want to do for all the file systems, but to get, get the full coverage of all our file systems, um, I think that's important. So we don't, so people don't say, I'm not going to do, use that because it doesn't support this, th this file system that, that I care about. And um, it, it's something that's out on the Amiga and only five guys have taken the time to do it. And so we don't have any other implementations except the kernel one or something like that. So UML actually is a very good uh, yeah. solution. Yes. You know, the piece, we have the pieces. No one's wired up the plumbing in user space. And I don't know who that needs to be. Um, I, you know, I, 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 I know that there are possibilities. So you know, I, I'm hoping at the plumbers conference I can find, the, find people who want, want, who want, want to Help take it the next mile. Yeah. Oh, throw in the. Thanks. Good throw. Uh, so the NetBSD guys did something for a completely different reason, which might help, which is a uh, rump kernel. I don't know if you've heard of that. Um, I may have heard of it, but I don't know anything about it. They wanted to test their drivers. So they figured out a way to pull out all of their drivers uh, and separate it from the kernel. And they built like a little test framework around it and they called it RUMP. And then later on they realized, hey, we can just build a whole working system on this. So they called it RUMP Run. And they made it like a little containerized system, which then became like a uni kernel. But the point is it runs NetBSD drivers unmodified, okay. basically in user space. Okay, yeah. And they complain that Linux can't do this. And you'll never be able to do it because the Linux kernel is too complicated, not built right. But they could do it with NetBSD. Well, <laughs> to a certain extent, we've got UML. And there's a similar project um, out there called LKL Linux, although it hasn't been merged up upstream. So you know, I, yeah, hearing that the BSD guys do it, you know, I wouldn't even mind if we ran the BSD user space to get most of the file systems. Maybe there's some file systems the BSD's got that we don't. But, um, you know, right, right now I want us to get the file system so if, if I get a random image, I, I, I know what to do to use it, and everybody else does too, so they don't get, we, we don't have to worry about the, the, the security issues. But yeah, no, that, that's helpful. So yeah, if you could build something like Rump on Fuse, then you yeah. could take all of your hundreds of file systems and run it in user space without modifications. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's what I'm thinking. Um, you know, and I think um, th 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 that um, I, I have some technical difficulties with this microphone, but um, you know, I, you know, I, I think what I saw with libguestfs, it already has a UML adapter, so we can do something very similar today, um, and they've been solving it for the VM case, but no one's I don't think anyone has um, wired this up to auto mounts, you know, or, or, or mounts in your desktop. And, and it certainly isn't well known, or else people would tell me, just, just use it. <laughs> um, so. so I'm trying to understand what your threat model is. Um, are you uh, trying to address a situation that someone might have changed the metadata of a file system in a malicious way that would cause a kernel crash or break privilege? Or are you concerned about the content in the files? Uh, can you explain uh, in more detail what your threat model is? OK. The, the threat model th 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 that I see and, and I've heard is that if you, if you maliciously corrupt the metadata of a file system, um, then you can cause the file system driver to misbehave. Um, you know, one thing I saw not too long ago as an example is someone, 
uh, Alvira was re reviewing ISOFS and he found a case where um, if the metadata was set up in such a way, you could cause infinite stack depth in the kernel. You know, the code would, well, would just recurse or something. Um, and so there are lots, uh, lots of little things like that. It's metadata, that's what we worry yeah. about. Eventually, all the slow file systems, we would just make it so you can't build it except on UML if that works. And then we could, uh, it'd be a security improvement from that perspective. Um, yeah, and it, it, yeah, it's, it's two things. It's the metadata, and it's the um, fact that someone else had their hands on it. They are really not certain if they've got your best interests at heart. Right. And, um, like if you put a USB stick, even if it's an XFS, you want to mount it in UML and copy it over the data if you cared about the speed. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. There. You know, if you're just transferring files, you care about speed. Um, you know, and if you can say, I, I very trust this USB stick uh, because I, I'm the one who put the file system on and stuff. But yeah, you know, but, but yeah, so speed's not inconsequential, but you know, at the same time, we don't want, want um, trust, we got to get out of this trust by default, or, or full trust by default. Um, so if I could just follow up briefly. Yeah. Um, so you don't trust uh, FSCK or metadata checksumming to uh, insulate you from uh, these kind of attacks? Metadata checksumming will will catch bit flips, um, and so. But you know, if if if, if I if, if I'm if, if I put on my evil hat, I I, I can correct I can corrupt the file system and ch fix the um, checksums. Well, it it just seems to me like you're trying to address future file system bugs that happen to be security issues. Um, yeah, the way yeah. Yes, exactly. So why we, we have a way of dealing with bugs. We find them and we fix them. So uh, I'm not sure what you're trying to accomplish. OK. So what I'm trying to accomplish is making it so that, um, OK. We don't really care. Sure. Andrew FS has some pretty serious bugs. Nobody cares. Uh, and nobody fixes it. And nobody can test it. So if we could move it to UML, that would be a win. M moving this to user system. space will definitely improve security, and that's a useful thing, but uh, it doesn't really solve the problem, because the modern exploits are sufficiently complex, and people exploit the JavaScript and the renderer process, host process, some server, and then the, the kernel. So if the image can exploit the fuse server and then exploit the kernel, that's not really much different. It's kind of makes it harder, so it's good, but it doesn't address the problem of, of actually checking the image and correctly handling the bad images. So if we re just reuse the same code, then it's slightly better, but yeah. it doesn't really solve the problem. Well, it's... Fundamentally, with security, you can't solve the problem. You can only make it more costly for someone to attack you. And I think the first step on this is to um, not you know, is to make is to figure out how we can use the stuff we've got to make it more costly to um, uh, attack us. You know, get into either space. You know, once we do that, we can put in all kinds of sandboxes do all kinds of stuff, depending on what we see as a threat model. But right now, it's nobody, you know, this is not, you know, in ext4, which is, as far as I know, the best file system for handling bugs like this. As they're reported, they'll fix them. But there is no confidence that there aren't existing bugs in the file system that you can, can exploit. Uh, you know, that, 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 you know, that, that they, 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 they don't want to, you know, um, they'll fix the bugs they know about, but if, but they, they, they don't know how to find bugs of this class or, and, and make certain they're not in the file system. 
you know, fuzzer, you know, fuzzers report these every day on the Linux kernel mailing list just about. We've got, you know, more, and yeah, fixing them's great, but um, how do we get to the point where um, we're not a, you know, it, it, um, it takes a really well-financed adversary um, to, to, to um, attack us this way. You only care about this for privilege. You care about this for privileged and unprivileged users alike. So you want to make, even if you're root, then you want to run the file system as, for example, in UML. Mode. Um. So, I, I, you know, I think root should be able to say yes, I trust this, but root okay. shouldn't, ha you know, but we shouldn't have to make trust the default policy, which is all we've got right now. A lot of file systems are auto mounted, it, and. Uh, they run at root privilege, uh, kernel privilege, bring out. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And that's where the disconnect I've got is. Uh, behind. Oh, sorry. I've been uh, running with UML for years and years and years until it's kind of broken and, and features are missing, and so I had to move to, VM, uh, to ah. VMs. But uh, this is actually the, a doable because there, I, uh, there used to be. I think there's still one uh, fuse uh, plugin that will give you a, a, a file system over SCP. Okay. And and you easily uh, spin a, a UML with a file system with a mount, and you SSH into that UML, and you and you and you have a fuse a fuse file system. So it's just, it's a, it's a ba it's some kind of script crap that you need to write, but you could do it on any image you want to do. Yeah. So I mean, I mean, what I mean is that it's you need someone to want it because it's very easy to do this thing that you said. Yeah, it's very doable, and this is my my talk to get people to want it, and to get the file system, and maybe with a little luck, get some user space guys to say. This is what we need to do to, to, to make something like this the default. Um, so that I plug in a USB key, and by default, it auto mounts in user space with fuse instead of in the kernel, um, but w w w where the attack surface is so big um, that they just that the file system developers throw up their hands. That you know that's you know, so, and I can only you know. Um, I guess, did we talk about LK, you talked about LKL briefly, but did we talk about LKL fuse yet, yet for example, and how much work it would be to split it out yeah. of the whole LKL project? And then I guess that the other question is, do you expect, or do we expect, that any solution we can come up with is performance-wise okay, so that people aren't like, okay, I, I get the security issues, but the performance impact is going to be so high, I'm just going to say, I'm not doing this. Yeah. So I guess you, you, my, my, my personal goal would be that the performance is good enough that if you're dealing with a, with a lousy USB stick, um, you probably don't care. You know, um, you know. But, you know, because people don't use things that are horrible performance-wise. I don't think we have, have to be per awesome performance-wise. Um, just, just good enough so that things work. Um, you know, and, and so that we don't have, aren't constantly exposing our users to all these security holes and throwing up our hands because it's too, too hard to solve it in the kernel. Okay. Um, is it, do you, do you have a feeling about where most of these bugs might be? My question is, is it enough to just parse the initial super block info and whatever else or um, whatever metadata is, is in the file system, see that, okay, I didn't crash, then we can mount it in the kernel? Like, is, this, is that a halfway measure that you would be comfortable with? Or do you think there's other bugs later and other? Um, I think. File systems, especially the big ones like XFS, 
um, and ButterFS and, and that, that one we've never merged um, is, are, are, are some of the biggest piece of chunks that ever get chunks of code that get into, in, into the kernel. And um, if you allow corrupt, for corrupt metadata, that, that makes all of that code an attack surface. Because basically, all a file system driver does is deal with metadata in, in, you know, as far as their logic. Um, so 100,000 lines of code is an attack surface um, on a big file system? You know, I don't, don't, don't know, know where, where all the bugs could be. Um, and that's kind of the fundamental prob problem. Um, nobody. Uh, n n nobody really knows, and their priorities are for, I trust the disk, I put the data there. And, and, and that's where, where it ought to be for local file systems, um, because that's what gets the performance and stuff. So, so I mean, there's a large class of file systems that already do what you're describing, network file systems, right? They don't trust their peer. They parse every packet. They make sure that everything's sane before they allow the operation to proceed. Well, why, why hoist the existing code up in user space and decorate it with a whole lot of protection? Why not just recode these things defensively? Um, good question. Um, uh, yeah. That's another solution, by the way. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. pretty performative. Yeah, UML, NFS. Um, you know, it's one of those, so far, any mention of that, the file system developers um, are not keen on the idea. Uh, well, network file systems are hard, right? But, yeah. And yeah. I don't know, you know, and I'm not 100% certain. So, so these well, uh, the, the issue. It is fully solved for network file systems either. I, you know, you know, well, no, what I've seen never, of NFS, it, it looks really good. This is never a solved problem, right? Yeah. You, you're, you're never going to have a 100% solution with no vulnerabilities, right? True. But you need an architecture that allows you to have good confidence that you're close. I don't think you necessarily do. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, as far as all of this goes, um, if, if you can sit, if, if anyone can sell to a ordinary file system developer in the Linux kernel that this is the way they ought to do it, and um, get get them to agree to do it, and um, you know. This, you know, I will be happy with that. I've been having these conversations off and on, and um, and um, the, none of them um, see have any confidence that they can do it. So, yeah, we should we should just uh, we should. Just do an unconference and just do it. Like, the, I mean, part of it, you have to configure the network and you have to decide which IP address you're going to use for your. The UML. Yeah. It's using infrastructure that exists here. Installer. Fedora installer. Configure that. Microphone. Configure all. I agree. It's a setup thing. But uh, a Fedora installer can easily figure all that. So, so it, the networking is basically the same as the one used with the VMs. And so the net, network manager and everything and the internal D, uh, DHCP is already solved. The UML has very good networking. And, uh, and, and running something, running a UML with a something, like a dedicated something is is how the UML works. So, so this is this is a, 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 a distribution 
two weeks work to say, okay, I enable a button. Yeah. You know, um, but somebody and needs the to NFS go. NFS is much, better, much more mature than Fuse. Mm. Because okay. it's all inside the UML. There is no interconnection. I don't need to go from the Fuse application and connect to the UML application is somehow. Yeah, you can run and there KNFS. It's already and uh, mature. Like, uh, and all you do, uh, the, I don't need XFS developer involvement. All I need is that they support NFS export on their file system. UML compiles, compile the, the KO, the UML KO. And so it's, a, it's more like a packaging thing. Oh, it's not, comp yeah, and until we connect those dots in user space, it's not completely solved, but yeah, we've got, you know, that's kind of my point, we've got the pieces that one way or another, we can get the file systems but running in user space. The pieces that you don't even need to rewrite a single line of code. Which, hmm. which would be, it's, it seems also that this would be pretty problematic because, in, well, I guess, for me, and my, I may misunderstand this, but there is sort of the implication that actually, file system drivers should not be part of the kernel, so, uh, or should not run in, in kernel space. And that's probably something that you don't want to tell a bunch of file system maintainers. <laughs> well, if file system maintainers um, want to turn around and say, yeah, I can, I, I can solve these issues, um, and, you know, and, and we can allow unprivileged users to mount them, even when they're ma malicious, that's great. But um, you know, instead, they've been telling me the exact opposite. Um, and they've been looking for, I've had suggestions from file system developers how to run the file systems in user space. Or you know, run the kernel in user space, so, so the untrusted ones. So that's, you know, um, so, so, so that's the direction I, I've had in that. So does anyone ha have any clue how to get things so, if we had one of these setups, so the file system would auto, would mount under GNOME or KDE with this way instead of using the kernel driver. Yeah, use GBFS. GBFS. Well, I, I mean, how do, how do we connect all the pieces so it happens by default? GBFS, I think, could be persuaded to, to accept the UDEV event and not the microphone. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I believe at least for GNOME, GVFS, which is the GNOME file system daemon that also uses Fuse, could be persuaded to intercept the USB event and just vector it to GVFS, then set up your Fuse mount instead of actually just mounting it in the kernel. So I think it's possible with that, but I think we'd want a more our operating system generic thing. So I think you'd probably want UDEV to do it all, rather than relying on some GNOME daemon or some KDE oh. daemon. Okay, is, is that, that how the auto mounts happen now with, with UDEV? Okay. Well, no, no, they have, the auto mounts in GNOME happen with GVFS. UDEV is some sort of participant in that, but it doesn't, it's not the supervisor. So I think for us, we probably want to make UDEV the supervisor. Just, okay. Just a guess, because I, I don't think you want containers to rely on whichever graphical desktop is running. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, and this is, you know, there, yeah, but there's a problem for containers, there's a problem for, 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 for other things. Um, you know, but yeah, like USB sticks. But yeah, if we can, if, if we can make it happen. It's a, yeah. the NFS, uh, the whole access uh, part is already done. You just go uh, slash net slash some naming convention. Okay. By USB 4, and, and you have it. It's mm. the, it's, you, you do need a, 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 a someone to set up a UDIV rule which says in these condition, under these conditions, run the UML loader okay. with this name. And then, oops, you have a slash net slash USB seven. Okay. So, so it's all there. It's, a, it's, a, it's something that someone wants to want to, want to do it. Yeah. You don't need to write code. So, j j just because I see an NFS uh, maintainer back there, <laughs> um, you know, um, how scary do, do, um, does, it, does um, this, this idea of um, mounting NFS um, file, sy 
you know, unprivileged users mount, mounting NFS file systems um, um, sound to you? This is all uh, done. Well, there are lots of things that already happen. You know, the, the, the challenge is getting this into supported and people actually know what's happening and can maintain and all of that. Uh, yeah, a couple, I mean, obviously this would work. It's not, not hard, right? This is very easy. But yeah. uh, a couple of quick things I was thinking about. One is that uh, you had the Vert.io presentation yesterday. You know, obviously, a little faster if you use Vert.io. I think we did a prototype of that for Samba. I think you did, didn't you do a prototype for Vert.io? Yeah, no, no. Yeah. yeah, so you would, yeah, because I mean, obviously, using Vert.io, it'd be faster. Uh, second, I was thinking about Ganesha versus the kernel server, right? Because you're trying to avoid introducing a virus, right? So, you know, yeah. a complicated virus where, you know, the file system crash and killing the NFS server could be bad. Ganesha also uh, may have plugins. Now, if you did this with Samba, Samba has a virus check plugins, right? So you could just you know run the virus check plugin and check the signature on the thing, and mm. that's kind of cool. So you know if you did the auto mount with with SMB three, you know you'd have the virus check plugin could be called out. But I think NFS Kinesia probably has the same thing, right? I think where it has a call out for virus but check. But he's, he wants to run the if XFS driver. So yeah. if you are already running a URL driver, the easiest thing is just to enable the kernel. You know, export of these yeah components. yeah and, and that's, it's very easy I mean I think I agree with you it's, it's easy path so a couple other quick things I was thinking about was um, so you can make performance even a little bit better NFS easy Samba is easy this would be trivial to do um, but you know in a lot of these cases what are these things what are these drives formatted with your mounting with um, so I would think most common is actually ext4 yeah or, or or fat, and these are like super trivial to do. Like, okay, look at XFS. It's five times bigger than either of those. NTFS is already in user space, so if it's an NTFS one, that's easy. Fat yeah. and the ext4 are actually fairly simple problems to solve in user space compared with a normal file system. But I just was wondering if your use case ever hits XFS, where it's you know you don't want to do that yeah. in user space. Uh, at this point, my, 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 yeah, I don't know quite, quite what my you know. Yeah, I'm just looking at the general problem where, by default, that's when you plug in a USB stick, that, or we're, or we're dealing with container images. Yeah, yeah. So um, I'd like you to uh, consider widening your use case because you're missing a few steps. Okay. Uh, so the physical slot, or the place that you get the file from, right? These are the places where untrusted thingies come from. Yeah. Um, who manages that? The kernel is actually listening for this insert event. So you already have another <coughs> attack surface you haven't talked about. Uh, supposing it's the GPT um, partition table, somebody can create some random thing that has a, a partition table which is suddenly cause a random uh, creation of device nodes of uh, uncountable entries. Um, so there's many, many things before you get to the place where somebody said, hey, let's w see what happens if you cause every single file system KO to get loaded all at once. So I think the whole notion that you're really aiming towards is part of my machine I, I trust because it's the stuff I'm sitting next to, right? It's my keyboard, it's my mouse. And the other part, let's call it a VM, yeah. right? So I'd like to hand away this slot so that whenever I plug in something into that slot, it goes and gets handled by my local cloud. Right? That's kind of the idea that somebody posed here with uh, running a user mode Linux is. Yeah. Let's take the part which belonged to random stuff I picked up uh, off the street when I bicycled home uh, and, and say, let's, let's call that a, a separate trust zone. Yeah. Yeah, I think there are plenty of good ideas. And um, my suggestion here would be to put together a discussion forum. You can pick your favorite and, and get a discussion going. going. Okay. Like, Clearly enough people. Yeah. <laughs> Mailing people list or something, right? It's interesting. Yeah. I mean, the biggest push as far as I see it came from the container use case, I mean, right? For, for, a long, for a long time, I mean, one of the reasons why we have all of these infrastructure to, for example, make unprivileged mounts and so on work yeah. is to be able to use me, fine file systems, meaningful file systems apart from Fuse uh, 
in containers for unprivileged users, which is obviously not going to happen. So, <laughs> yeah, well, think, the, you know, the, 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 that's kind of where I've been working and where I picked it up. But right, and that's where the motivation but, comes from. But, 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 but for even longer, um, the, the first way we, we, we had a malicious code spread was people would plug in a floppy disk, and um, bad things would happen. So this is, you know, th this is the oldest attack vector I know of in computers. And um, we, we have yet to figure out how to lock it down very well. It, um, we're not even really trying right now. So don't forget the other scenario of a bad device, right? That works great. That works great for a minute when you first mount it. And then a block goes bad. It happens to be a metadata block. And, you know, evil things happen. Wasn't evil intent, but the yeah. system fails. So, you know, there there are other scenarios that aren't even security related, just integrity related. Yeah, and I think all the integrity related, you know, everybody will be happy to take take bug fixes and all of that. Um, you know, the, what's unique about security issues is someone says, "Oh, there is this one insane path." where you um, walk up the wall, climb across the ceiling, and you drop down, and it causes an issue, which has a one in a bazillion chance of happening ac um, accidentally, but has about a one in one chance of happening if someone's attacking you well, deliberately. Yeah, James had a really interesting presentation a little while ago about a non-exploitable vulnerability, right? Is it really a vulnerability if you can't exploit it? I, I don't think that's a worry here. Right? These are real vulnerabilities, right? Yeah. Actual evil USB sticks lying on the ground, right? Yes. Or, yeah, or, or, or um, almost it, uh, as bad in this scenario you're talking about with drivers and widening the scope. If someone takes, say, an Android phone or something with similar functionality and programs it so it just looks like a USB stick um, and attacks our drivers. Some of that we've got um, infrastructure for. And a lot of those places are small enough there's a reasonable chance we can harden, harden the harden the code so that, you know, someone can, can review it in a day and say, no, I don't think it's it's reasonably well, not not even on the USB stacks. Okay. Yeah. Well, the the, the old-fashioned um, file system ta tables seem simple enough, but uh, malicious or USB partition tables. Is not ah. But even if you looked at that table and then a second later the table changed. You know, True. You did. I'm sorry. You yeah. did all the protection you you wanted, but your code was weak, right? Because then what happens? Then the, 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 the UML crashes. Okay, so now you've jumped to the solution. You've hoisted it into an un, unprivileged space. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Well, 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 that's what I'm advocating for. That, that, that we find out how to take these problems and and push them so that it's more likely to user space crash, so it's harder to exploit the kernel. Exactly. And it's harder to exploit things. Um, and it gives us some confidence that um, we're not being taken advantage of by someone who's very clever. You need a crisp threat statement, right? Okay. It's then you go three minutes left. you want to give us a summary? <laughs> ah, so I guess the summary is, there is, a, a, you know, um, but with malicious devices or malicious um, file system layouts, um, we could, um, the kernel and your, your um, local machine can be attacked, you know, um, whether it's, you know, f from an ISO you download off the net, USB stick you plugged in, a VM or a container Im image you get from somewhere, and, you know, you know it, it, it'd be, and, um, doesn't look, and the code bases are large enough. The, um, the attack surface is large. People don't think th think they can nail completely solve the issues. So it, um, it would be good if, if we can figure out how to push it out of the kernel into a sandbox to 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 um, to, to um, re re reduce the threat. Good summary. Okay. And if someone can automate th that in user space, that would even be better. <laughs>